Our main topic that is understanding deforestation in Africa going uh, we are to be presented by uh, James uh, McDonald James. I, I would like to introduce to Mr. Uh, James as an executive director and a co-founder of Biolink Private Limited that is trading as SAS Energetica, which is into designing and construction, installation of biodigested. Um, my, Mr. McDonald holds a bachelor of engineering honors degree in chemistry and chemical engineering. He is an entrepreneur uh, with an interest in renewable energy and climate, climate research. He worked on, uh, uh, on a biodiesel production from uh, microalgae. Uh, micro project uh, has a vast experience in the construction of polythene and concrete based biodigesters. Mr. McDonald is a trained internal auditor for ISO 9000 uh, and one of 15, 2015 on quality management system. Uh, that is the background uh, for Mr. McDonald, who is going to take us to our, uh, uh, on our main session that is understanding deforestation in uh, uh, in Africa. I would like to confirm that Mr. McDonald James is with us today. Mr. McDonald, are you there? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I'm there. Can you hear me? Thank you, Mr. McDonald, uh, for that. And uh, Mr. McDonald, you have the audience. Uh, you, you you have the chance to present. Uh, understanding uh, deforestation in Africa. Mr. McDonald, the audience is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity that you've given me to present uh, on the topic about uh, the status of our forest that is in Africa. Uh, and thank you very much, ESH Africa, for this uh, platform that you've created, uh, the e-lounge, where as a continent and as a world, we get to do uh, a digital uh, or online presentation uh, about the changes and effects uh, that are happening in our society. Um, today, I'm going to be presenting on a very important um, topic for those ones who are very keen about uh, our environment, that is, uh, on the topic understanding deforestation in Africa. And uh, by the way, as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert in, 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 in the forest, uh, but however, I'm someone who is interested uh, and very concerned uh, about the rate at which our forest is being cut, uh, especially in my country, and, and, and as well as generally in, in Africa as a continent. So we're saying um, this presentation, the structure of the presentation for today um, is going to include uh, an overview of Africa's deforestation status. Uh, we are also going to look at the causes of deforestation. Uh, after looking at the causes of deforestation, we are going to look at the effects of deforestation. And then from the effects, we look at uh, a game theory approach. Now, a game, game theory approach is an interesting uh, mathematical model of trying to understand um, society and, 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 and situations that happen in our society. And after that, we are lastly going to look at some of the solutions and conclusions uh, to address these challenges that we are facing as a continent. So for the start, uh, we then have to define at least uh, what is deforestation. Now, deforestation, you are saying this is when humans uh, remove or clear large areas of forest lands uh, and related ecosystems for non forest use. So, we are saying in these situations, uh, the main perpetrators of deforestation are human beings. Human activity is responsible for most of what? Of our deforestation. And what is the state now of uh, deforestation in Africa? Uh, generally, in the whole world, uh, it is estimated that 21% of land area uh, is occupied by forest. Uh, that's a small number, considering that uh, 
the number of human beings compared to the population of other animals is, is far greater. So in other words, we are saying we are, we are shortchanging our, our fellow uh, animal species and even plants as well. And then we're saying uh, many of the world's most threatened and endangered animals live in these forests. So we're saying by us cutting down trees, we are reducing the inhabitants of other animals as well, of our fellow uh, species. And by so doing, we're saying as human beings, if we, 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 we remove uh, other animals from existing, it makes us less humans. And now, looking at our continent as Africa, uh, Africa is believed to have the second fastest rate of deforestation in the world, uh, that is after Southeast Asia. So we, if you look at that, we are saying we are leading or we, we, we are close to leading uh, the world in terms of our rates of deforestation as a continent. And now, uh, it is estimated that 4.1 million hectares of natural forests in Africa is lost every year. Uh, due to all these uh, activities of deforestation. And it is this deforestation is most prevalent in continents like tropical rainforests like uh, the Congo Basin and the Guinea forest of West Africa. Uh, and the Congo Basin is the second largest uh, tropical rainforest in the world. That is after the tropical rainforest in Africa. They are estimated that um, they contain about 67% of Africa's biodiversity. So if we compromise uh, those tropical rainforests, what it means is we are compromising on those 67% of uh, our biodiversity and risk uh, extinction of some of um, precious animals like uh, the tiger that is in the equatorial rainforest. And even if you try to go down uh, south, uh, the southern part of Africa, we have got the, some uh, animals also which are at the brink of extinction, like the white rhinoceros, which lives in the forest. So those animals, all of them, they 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 are at risk if we continuously cut down trees um, in our continent. And um, coming back uh, to Zimbabwe, uh, however, if we have got people from other countries in Africa here, uh, they can be also open. Uh, after this presentation to enlighten us on the state of deforestation in their country. But I'm saying in Zimbabwe, uh, at least 6 million tons of timber are consumed annually for fuel, fuel alone, that is. And about 1.4 million tons uh, more than Zimbabwe's forest can sustainably provide. So I think we are cutting down trees uh, more than our forest can sustain. So what it simply means is we are simply going south we are slowly depleting our forest by activities. And in Zimbabwe, again, uh, it is estimated that uh, we lose 330,000 hectares of forest annually, uh, which is equivalent to about 60 million trees a year, which is being cut down for few alone. Yeah, that's a very scary number. <laughs> And these numbers, they are real, and we need to provoke uh, discussion and, and, and action around these uh, concerns about our environment. And in Zimbabwe, we are saying, to, in order for us to compensate for the cutting down of trees, we need to plant more trees. But however, we are saying the, our planting rate in Zimbabwe is 8 million trees a year. And we are saying fuel alone is taking 6 million of those. And what about people like what has been highlighted before? And what about even uh, another use of wood, which is uh, furniture, and all other uses that we can use uh, trees for? So we need to understand that um, our forests are being cut at a very, very alarming rate. And we have then have to go and look at the causes of deforestation, uh, mainly in Africa. So the main uh, contributor to deforestation in Africa, uh, and it's believed to be about to take about 90% of our forest, uh, is mainly agriculture. So, agriculture is the main cause of uh, deforestation, as well as uh, new urban settlements as well. Uh, so, 
that's the biggest cause. So we need to then look at our agriculture and say, okay, uh, in order for us to, to meet our food demands, what then can we do uh, to minimize the rate at which we are cutting down trees in order for us to get food? Uh, another cause uh, for deforestation is the construction poles and timber. Now, timber is used for many uses uh, for furniture, it is for um, uh, wood uh, as well, it is used for paper, like what has been highlighted before. And another cause for deforestation is uh, wood for fuel. Now, this is the main prevalent uh, cause for deforestation in my country. Uh, people cut down trees because, uh, because of this uh, load shedding uh, causes that are happening. People then resort to use uh, wood as fuel, which is a very big concern because they're saying in this time, uh, there are some other sources of energy besides trees, but however, trees are cheap. Um, another cause, again, uh, for deforestation is tobacco curing. Um, so, these are some of the, 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 the causes of deforestation, the main causes of deforestation uh, in our continent. And what are the effects then of uh, deforestation, one might wonder. Uh, the main challenge that we have, or the main effect that uh, deforestation is going to cause is climate change. And what's causing climate change, uh, there are many factors now uh, in which deforestation is uh, causing climate change. And these factors, they include, but not limited to what I'm going to mention here today. Uh, the first uh, effect of cutting down trees is global warming. Uh, it is believed, right, uh, that trees, they absorb carbon dioxide for their own photosynthetic processes. And however, we're saying the trees, they're acting as carbon dioxide sinks. And now we know that carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide is one of uh, the main contributors to global warming, the greenhouse gas. So if we cut down trees, what it means is we are reducing uh, the carbon dioxide sinks and we are having uh, more and more carbon dioxide being emitted into the environment. And that's a very uh, great worry because the more we are continuously cutting down trees, the higher we are going to have carbon dioxide being emitted into the environment and the higher the temperatures are going to warm up. And it is believed that even the North Pole and the South Pole, they are melting because of global warming, which then leads to uh, increase in the sea level and affect those which inhabit uh, around those areas. And also deforestation affects um, the environment that is laid through soil erosion. It also results in what we call river siltation because after soil erosion, I think uh, the soil is not strong enough so that when even rain comes, it just wash away the topsoil. And that topsoil then is carried to our water bodies, like the rivers, which then result in what we call river siltation, where sand is depositing uh, at the bottom or the floor of the rivers or water bodies, so that the depth of our uh, water bodies then uh, decreases and then affects the ecosystem inside our rivers. And again, deforestation also causes loss of biodiversity, because I think especially in the tropical rainforest where there is uh, a very large amount of uh, interdependent species living. If we cut down those trees, what it then means is that we are going to reduce um, the biodiversity, the biodiversity of the plants themselves, as well as the animals that inhabit in those um, forests. Uh, again, another effect of deforestation is desertification. Uh, this is prevalent, especially in the sub-Saharan area where the temperatures are very high. Uh, where it is believed that uh, the Southern Africa, that is in Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, in Mozambique, they are slowly turning into desert because of the effect of deforestation. So these are the main effects uh, of deforestation uh, on our society. But there are other factors again, which is open for discussion uh, that I might have left out uh, on this presentation today. Now, uh, when we've understood that uh, these are the effects of deforestation, this is what's happening uh, 
on deforestation. Uh, there is a mathematical model which is being used. Uh, it's, it's, it's still new, but however, it has been successful in addressing some of the social challenges that we are facing uh, in this society, which is called the game theory approach. Uh, and mainly for this purpose of for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to be focusing on what is called the tag and scenario or a dilemma, uh, which is another sub 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 uh, topic uh, on that game theory approach. So what is the game theory? Now, the game theory is a branch of applied mathematics that provides tools for analyzing situations in which parties called players make decisions that are interdependent. So we are saying uh, we are all well raised with games, right? And the purpose of a game is to win. And we're saying uh, in the game theory approach, we are having players. And these players, they are making decisions interdependent. And it is assumed that each player is self-interested uh, and that their interests are reflected on a preference ordering. So I think people are going to have uh, their own preferences and they're going to be self-interested. And if we can then uh, order their preferences, we can assume or focus what decisions they would make for their own interests and act accordingly uh, to then address uh, the effects of their actions uh, in this game. Uh, so under this topic of uh, game theory, there is uh, a scenario or a situation which is called the social dilemma. We all know uh, this situation. Uh, what is a social dilemma? Uh, these are situations where each individual has a private incentive to do something, but when both of them follow their private incentive, the whole group is worse off. So what am I saying? We're saying uh, there are situations, um, I might use an analogy of, of, of two siblings that share a room in, in, in their house, right? So if we have two siblings that are sharing a house and they have not decided on who is going to do the cleaning at a particular time, who is going to do even the, 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 all the arrangements that can be done inside the house. Uh, if that is not agreed, uh, the most logical thing for an individual to do if they are self-interested is to continue doing whatever that they're interested in doing and avoid uh, cleaning the room with the hope that the other sibling is going to do the cleaning. So that's their own private incentive. What then it means is if they don't do the cleaning, the other one is going to do the cleaning. So for them, they have won because they have done what they are interested in doing with their time. And at the same time, the house is clean for them. However, this situation becomes interesting when both parties then decide to follow their private incentive and decide not to do the cleaning. So what it then means is the house is not going to be cleaned. And at the end of the day, that is going to continuously pile until the house has become a healthy hazard. Why? Because no one wants to do the cleaning because it's, it's advantageous for them in such a situation. So this social dilemma uh, can also be related even to the conservation plans that even our nations can agree to, to, to follow. Let's say in Africa, countries decided to, to, to go green, right? And uh, avoid use uh, fuel and maybe let's say go paperless and uh, assign treatment. So in such a situation, uh, the countries involved, we can say these are players. And we assume that these several players, uh, they cooperate and agree to share the cost of uh, this conservation plan. Now suppose that the defection of one player would benefit them by reducing the cost uh, without a noticeable detrimental effect. Uh, on the overall conservation goal. So if they don't follow that agreement and the other, the rest of the group follows, uh, their effect is not going to have much effect on the conservation goal. But however, if everyone now uh, defects, it then affects uh, the overall conservation goal, which is the situation that our nations are facing uh, in this forest. And 
the forest is, is, is very interesting because it falls under a category of what are called common pool resources. Uh, in conservation context, uh, a common pool resource is a natural resource which is available for consumption from which it is difficult to exclude or eliminate users. Um, for example, fishing grounds, uh, forests, wetlands, grazing lands, uh, etc. Well, well, what we are saying is um, a common pool resource basically in legal context is basically an area uh, which is neither uh, owned privately by anyone or by institutions, uh, but is jointly owned by the community. And we cannot restrict who goes into the forest and get wood. We cannot restrict which company is going to go into the tropical rainforest and cut it down. So then if we continuously uh, do this uh, action simultaneously, we are following our own private incentives. This organization is trying to, 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 to then get more of this uh, common pool resource. It leads us to a situation which is called the tragedy of common. Now, this happens when a common pool resource is being uh, used and uh, being unchecked. So what is the tragedy of common? This is a situation where each user in a common pool resource independently attempts in self-interest to maximize his or her gain of the common pool resource, contrary to the common good of all users, causing therefore a depletion in the resource through their uncoordinated action. So we are saying if people continuously cut down trees and they're not being monitored, uh, every individual is trying to maximize their payoff or their benefit from the forest. So what it means is they're going to compete for this common pool resource until uh, the forest is now cut down to a state where it is now unsustainable. The, the, the most logical thing for, to do or the most logical action for each player in this game is to default or to not follow the conservation uh, goal. And really, it, it's really uh, worrisome. But however, we're saying this type of a game uh, that we are dealing with, it needs a cooperation. Both games, there are two types of games. There are, there are cooperative games where players need to cooperate for them to get uh, a more play payoff. And there are games where players don't need to cooperate because if they cooperate, it means they will then reduce their payoff. So in these situations, we are saying we are playing a game, uh, a cooperative game. And a cooperative game can be uh, analyzed by a situation which is called a star gun. A star gun, basically they're saying we've got two uh, hunters, which have got two kits uh, for hunting. The one kit is used for hunting rabbits, and another kit is used for hunting a stag. And but we, we, we all know that a, a rabbit has got far less amount of flesh than it takes. So, however, uh, a hunter can go hunting alone and they can only hunt a rabbit alone. And if they want to go hunting for a stag, they cannot do that alone. Because if they hunt a stag alone, they will, the, the chances of getting it are slim, especially considering the type of uh, the tools that they will have. So in such a situation, we're saying the, 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 the hunters need to independently decide on which tool to carry for the day of the hunt. If they decide to carry uh, the tools for hunting a rabbit, and this forest, we only have two rabbits, what it then means is they are going to compete for these two rabbits. And either they're going to gain all the two rabbits, or the other player is going to get all the two rabbits, and then they get zero, or they're going to share. The other one is going to get one, and the other one is going to get uh, one rabbit. Oh, however, again, uh, if they decide to carry the tools for hunting a stake, both of them, they are going to cooperate and team up and hunt a stake. And we all know that uh, the amount of flesh that they're going to get, even if they share equally the stake, is going to be even four times or three, uh, three times more than what they would have got if they go hunting for a rabbit. So in such a situation, uh, the hunters then need to cooperate in order for them to get more benefits. And this is the very, very situation that we are looking at uh, as a continent of Africa. 
if we continuously uh, go rabbit hunting and we continuously cut down trees, was it cheap? Was it free? Was it a common poor resource? Uh, however, the tragedy lies when all of us follow that incentive. And at the end of the day, we are going to have our forest being cut down uh, forever. So however, this is a situation where it highlights that uh, as, as, as individuals, as individuals and as, uh, institutions uh, that are concerned about climate change, we need to have uh, a common goal. We need to sit down and look at logical and practical ways of solving uh, this dilemma that we are having of a common poor resource. And there is a book uh, which is called Governing uh, the Common, which gives about 10 principles of how we can address uh, common poor resource or uh, consumption of common poor resource. Uh, some of the 10 uh, points in that book uh, involves uh, that, that, that what is called defining boundaries. They say you should be able to define boundaries on uh, who is supposed to cut this way and how. And no one is going to be allowed to encroach into someone's area uh, in their bid to get the tree. And again, we can also define legitimate users is another principle. Uh, we can define who can cut down trees and who is not allowed to cut down trees. Imagine if we let institutions cut down trees, we can have the capacity to buy heavy machinery which can destroy the forest in a week. So we then need to also define legitimate users of forest. We can also define inclusively or decide uh, as a community inclusively. And this is one of the most uh, cooperative uh, ways of dealing with the forest. So we're saying if we decide inclusively, everyone is going to have uh, a responsibility of keeping the forest. Uh, but however, this situation, like I'm, what I'm going to highlight uh, on our solution, it takes a lot of money. We can also monitor the, the, the forest as well, but we need a responsible uh, monitor in such situations. The one who is not corrupt, and the one who is accountable and transparent. We can also share knowledge as countries, as individuals, if we have people who are succeeding in conserving their forest, they should be willing to share. And people who are failing or struggling should be willing to again uh, learn from those who are making it uh, in conserving the forest. And we should also have a system which held people accountable for cutting down trees. And that needs uh, maybe penalizing them if, if, if they default or if they don't follow the rules. And if there is also some fight or some boundary issues, we can also be able to give mediation, uh, which is non partial And the locals, again, should govern their resources locally as individuals. And we are saying, at the end of the day, uh, there are a lot of ways that we can address these issues, like uh, some of these uh, principles that I'm talking about, which are in the book called Governing the Commons. But up outside uh, that book, there are some solutions, again, that we can um, implement as uh, a community or as people. The first one is public awareness. We need to involve the people who are involved in cutting down trees. We need to educate them. Uh, this, however, needs a lot of money because uh, we're going to have people who are going to train people. We're going to have maybe advocates. It consumes a lot of uh, money. And maybe uh, the responsible authorities, they don't have that money to push towards that because Africa has got a lot of uh, problems besides the forest. So that's some of uh, the solutions that we can uh, check. So we can even find cheap ways of uh, making uh, the public know or conscientize uh, the communities about the forest and the benefits of them keeping their forest, which is their own heritage. Right? We live in this uh, world one. We can also have strong law enforcement, like what I've highlighted earlier, that uh, we can have people who monitor the forest. In Zimbabwe, we've got uh, an organization, an institution called uh, Environmental Management Agency, EMA, 
uh, they have been doing a great job in arresting those who cut down trees. Now, especially for those uh, in the rural areas, you know about them. But however, people still continue to, to, to circumvent uh, their efforts to, to, to try to protect the environment. We can also promote a, a culture of planting trees. There are some organizations uh, that are now being involved in planting trees in Zimbabwe, but the National Tree Planting Day. I think we need to comment uh, our, our, our government for setting up such a day. It's a very important day uh, as a nation where people get to plant a lot of trees um, on that day. But however, tree planting should be done uh, every day or occasionally. If we are to maintain the status of our forest, we can also substitute uh, sources of energy uh, that are renewable. Right? People use uh, wood for fuel, for heating, for cooking. We can have greener options uh, like solar. Solar has been used successfully in Africa. We've got a lot of heat in Africa. Let's take advantage of that heat and turn it into energy that we can use to power our system and save the forest. We can also uh, use wind again for those especially who are close to the shores. They've got a lot of uh, tides which they can take advantage of and generate the electricity and again use for heating and other uses uh, in substitute for using wood as a fuel. We can also go uh, green by using biogas digester. That's my area of specialty. Uh, mainly biodigesters, they provide energy for heating, they provide energy for lighting. If they are big enough, they can even produce electricity. And this electricity is being produced from biodegradable organic waste, which is waste and not trees. So we're saying biodigesters, they save trees. And even an efficient biodigester can produce from 200 to 400 cubic meters of biogas a ton of organic feed. So that's a lot of energy that we can tap into organic waste, which is biodegradable, which if left uh, lying down can just decompose naturally to methane gas. And that methane gas can then also pollute the environment and cause uh, global warming as well. There are other green uh, options that we can take. However, uh, the list is unexhaustible. And lastly, we should also control timberland because timber is also responsible for cutting a lot of trees down. Timber is being used for making furniture. Timber is being used for production of paper. Timber is being used uh, for even uh, shelter as well in, in some countries. Right? So we need to regulate and monitor uh, the rate at which we are cutting down trees and the rate at which we are allocating land for those who are into production of timber. So basically, these are some of uh, the solutions that we can take uh, as a continent if we want to address uh, this issue of deforestation in our continent. Uh, with this, I think I, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. McDonald. To those uh, who are still joining us and who have joined us while we are continuing with our 18th episode, we that was Mr. McDonald who was presenting on the understanding of deforestation in Africa. Uh, Mr. McDonald, in his first presentation, he mentioned I uh, actually defined what is deforestation and uh, what uh, causes deforestation, what are the effects of deforestation, and uh, what are the possible solutions uh, to be uh, employed by us as Africans to minimize the uh, uh, act of deforestation. Uh, from my understanding that uh, Mr. McDonald uh, mentioned that the anthropology um, uh, actions are the ones that are on top of uh, influencing deforestation in our continent, uh, that is Africa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we were listening to Mr. McDonald and his presentation. I do believe across Africa, we have different questions, we have different contributions and comments 
towards what he was presenting and towards the issue, the each issue of Africa as we continue to dig our own grave and uh, as we continue to deplete the resources that are supposed to be used by the future generation and that is our children. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is our opportunity to ask questions and to put comments towards Mr. McDonald's presentation. Uh, the platform is uh, with us that we can uh, comment towards the presentation issues that are burning in your nation with regard uh, and confined to the uh, to the topic of today that is understanding uh, deforestation in Africa. Before we uh, uh, venture into your uh, each comment uh, and uh, question that you would like to ask uh, before we started this session, uh, uh, there is a lot of questions that were posted uh, uh, during registration uh, by different people uh, that I would post to uh, Mr. McDonald and uh, these questions in our comments that reads, is um, uh, why most of the uh, countries do not have rehabilitation programs? And uh, the second question posed is uh, why the climate change? We need to to, uh, to stop uh, deforestation. Uh, and uh, the third uh, comment uh, that came uh, from uh, a, reg a registrant uh, said, uh, to mit mitigate climate change effects that are some of the uh, that some of the cheaper solution that can be upheld uh, by our rural communities in Africa who depends on charcoal selling for survival and how do we conceive them and uh, to uphold such solution and then why uh, that uh, these are some of the questions that were asked by uh, some people during registration. And uh, Mr. McDonald, I leave this opportunity uh, to answer some of these questions with the help of other uh, people uh, in the webinar. Mr. McDonald. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will try to, to address uh, these questions in the order that you have given me. Uh, and in the best way that I know. So the first question was uh, about why most countries, they are not uh, implementing the rehabilitation program in their own countries to rehabilitate and resuscitate the forest. So the main challenge, um, why countries are not willing to, to, to take up this uh, issue, it's because of uh, financial uh, requirements our governments they don't have enough money as developed countries because we're saying africa uh is a lot of developing countries and even some uh, countries who are in africa so therefore the governments then uh fund tree planting and then and, 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 uh, monitoring of forests they don't have that financial power so they then divert money towards some of uh issues that need uh, money which are immediate which also gives them uh, a, a sense of uh, power as well so financial issue is the main uh challenge but however we're saying if our government they don't have money what are the options should they take because even if they don't have money they, the forests are being cut there's another concept which is called debt for climate swap so a debt for climate swap we're saying a country uh which has got a debt uh, to, 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 to towards another data. Uh, what they can then agree with the data is that uh, instead of that country paying that money, the data can forgive the debt to that country uh, on the condition that that country um, use or fund an equivalent of their own local currency towards uh, saving the environment, towards activities that are climate related. So what it then means is they will then have to pay uh, the debt with their own local currency for their own benefit. So it's a very important uh, way in which a nation can address uh, the issue of climate change uh, if it is financially incapable of uh, investing in deforestation. Like even, for example, recently in South Africa, I heard that uh, 
the government was given a lot of money about 146 billion equivalent uh, runs that is uh, towards uh, resuscitating ESCOM, towards it being becoming uh, more and more greener. So they are going to be forgiven a debt of about 146 billion. That's a lot of money. Uh, however, but they are investing in, in themselves. So is there another way how countries can, can address that issue? And again, uh, on another question as to why climate change, I think, I don't know if it was a question, but I think, um, but however, it's, it's written why, but it, it shows uh, a lot of concern, right? To, people are, are, seems like they're ignorant about uh, the effect of climate change. So there are many uh, ways in which we can address this is to educate people about this effect. If we don't educate people, people are going to blindly uh, cut down trees. And uh, the, the last question was, uh, what can the people in the rural areas do? What are the cheaper options that they can do in order for them to address their energy concerns at the same time also get revenue? So in order for them, there are a lot of cheaper uh, ways of getting energy. Like what I violated earlier, that is they can pro construct biodigesters. Biodigesters are simple to construct and they produce reliable source of energy because they don't have intermittent problems right they are, you can monitor the amount of waste that you feed the same amount of waste that you can amount of energy sorry, that you would get so if you feed more you get more energy if you want more you just feed more energy more organic waste so that's some of the cheaper options that they can rely on they are very cheap by digesters nowadays with the advent of um uh, the advancement in, in, in plastics. Now people can construct uh, plastic biodigesters which are cheaper than concrete ones and still meet their energy concerns in the it is raw set up, it's set up. And the good thing about a raw setup is that they have got a lot of waste. Uh, they've got cattle, they've got goats, they've got sheep and, and all that. So I think they can uh, combine those uh, organic waste and feed into their biodigesters. And at the end of the day, we're saying they would then meet uh, their energy content. And however, there are other issues uh, about uh, employment, which was also embedded uh, in that question. Now, if we are constructing biodigesters, it means we are creating employment. And by creating employment, I think people can get a decent living from constructing biodigesters. Even solar as well, they can get into solar, uh, and, and, and provided that they are given enough uh, training towards uh, such initiatives. So basically, those are some of the ways that we can address uh, these questions. Uh, I think, thank you very much. If there's anyone in the audience uh, with better knowledge, uh, they can share as well with us on those questions. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. McDonald, for answering those questions. Uh, is there anyone who have a comment and contribution towards understanding deforestation in Africa? Well, from my end, uh, it looks like uh, everybody is pretended, but um, I would like to pose a question to everybody who is uh, on this uh, platform that what are you doing as an individual to uh, minimize the uh, deforestation in your local or in your niche in your country and what uh, uh, action plan that you are taking as an individual to uh, minimize or to mitigate um, the effects of deforestation across across um, uh, Africa. Yeah, I have um, uh, from my chat question, I have um, a, a, a question uh, which start as a comment from uh, Mukangwa. Uh, he's uh, saying coming from a marginalized rural community of Zambia where the uh, survival of our people are all dependent on charcoal selling. How best can we achieve cheaper solution for mitigating climate change uh, if it's as a result of deforestation. Uh, that uh, is Mukangwa uh, from Zambia uh, asking a question, uh, Mr. Uh, James, uh, you are here to answer the question. Okay, I think it's similar to the, that question that I've um, answered before that was talking about uh, 
the marginalized people in the rural areas because they're saying people in the rural areas they don't have um, a lot of uh, activities that generate income as compared to for those in the um, suburbs in town so again i would answer it in the same way that uh, some of the cheaper options for meeting energy demands is using bio digester for the bio digester is basically a unit that converts uh organic waste into a combustible gas and so i think by it having to be fed with waste waste it can be especially at a rural setup can be as good as uh free right so they can implement uh construction of just as a rural uh, community for them to get what uh, energy and by construction of biodigesters, what, what it then means is people then need to, to it also saves the environment as well. Because we're saying charcoal in itself, uh, it's a fossil fuel, right? Uh, mm, provided that maybe they, 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 they've, got, they've created uh, the charcoal at, um, artificially, maybe by cutting down trees and going through that process of creating charcoal. But anyway, we're saying, again, it's also a burden to our trees as well. If you are manufacturing that that charcoal, and even in Zimbabwe, I think that they've got there are people that I see coming from Zambia with, with this charcoal, selling it in Zimbabwe. So I think uh, I think it must be a good business in Zambia, uh, this charcoal business. So I think there's need to to substitute uh, this charcoal by maybe having other options uh, at rural communities where people can engage in community uh, community engagement schemes where they can substitute uh production of charcoal with other more green and sustainable issues as well i think yeah those are some of the ways that we can address that issue thank you very much uh thank you mr james for addressing that um uh, uh, uh that question however from my side i see um mr tichawana mungazi your hand is raised uh, you can, uh, you have uh, the audience. Uh. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my question goes to Mr. McDonald, but I would like to start by highlighting just a few issues. Uh, we, uh, for the month of uh, September, for this month, we, we were our main focus as Asia Africa was on sustainable energy, and we have had uh, several sessions and several. Uh, discussion on, 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 on those issues. And uh, one of the issues that was highlighted uh, is the issue of affo affordability, especially in these rural areas. And as highlighted by the by uh, Ketiwe, uh, it's, uh, you can see that it's, it's some of the issues. And uh, from the discussion that we have been having, uh, people couldn't uh, manage to come with a better solution on how we can uh, address the issue of accessibility because of financial constraints and other issues. But thanks to Mr. McDonald, it seems uh, you have brought a solution to us. Uh, you have been talking about uh, biodigested, biodigester, biodigesters, and you have been saying that uh, they are quite uh, cheap and accessible. But I would like to ask, um, in rural areas, you can see that uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a given that people cannot uh, have, have, uh, uh, cannot have uh, low income or I can say they, they don't have enough money maybe to purchase those, those bio biodigesters. So I would like to ask, uh, can they be scaled up to, to accommodate maybe four or five houses whereby the owners of those uh, houses in the rural areas, they can uh, come together and then and, 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 and contribute for, for, for the construction of a biodigester. How does it work, Mr. McDonald? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Teach. Uh, okay, it, it depends with the, the, the location and uh, the, the way in which the communities are set up. So that is how close are these uh, households. If the households are close enough, they can do a concept which is called co-feeding, where all of them, they can feed uh, the digest and share the gas. But however, we're saying, especially considering that we've got the special types of digesters which are called polythene. A polythene digester is, is, is cheaper than you can imagine. However, uh, they just need uh, people to, to be taught on how to, to construct them. Uh, we've got some organizations that have been making uh, 
efforts in trying to address or to, to, to educate people about these types of digestion. Uh, even in our organization, violence uh, or certain education, we also are into construction of polythene based biodigestors. They are cheaper than the concrete ones. Even our clients, sometimes we advise them to take the polythene wine because we get the same results but cheaper. And there are also concerns about the durability of, of plastic and all. Plastic is, is, is cheaper and uh, if kept safely, uh, we can have even plastic nowadays, which is constructed, especially uh, if you see it treated, which can uh, last up to a decade. So I think these are cheaper options, right? Even an individual at a raw setup can afford to have a 10 cubic uh, polythene based bread by the gift that they are feeding as they're getting weight. Or even some non governmental organizations, they can, who are into climate research, they can pump money towards a construction of polythene by the gift. Trust me, with a budget of about 25,000 US dollars, right? An NGO can do a lot of polythene based bread by the gift and give that to a rural community, right? By so doing, we are saving the environment. Why? Because indeed, uh, people in the rural areas, they don't have financial capacity to maybe to even have even that quality provider. Yes, they might not have that financial power. So they would just resort to using what I would. So I would, I would, I would also uh, lobby for the government and uh, NGOs which are into climate research to fund biodigester uh, uh, efforts. Why? Because it's cheaper. It's far cheaper than all of the other ways of, 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 of um, getting energy from renewable energy like solar and so on. Yeah, thank you. I think I've answered you. I don't know if you are answered well. Yes, uh, yes, I'm answered. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. McDonald, for addressing issues from uh, Mr. Mungazi. And I do believe uh, you are an expert in alternative energy as, um, as it is one of uh, a solution to uh, uh, curb up the effects of deforestation. Mr. McDonald, thank you very much for, for that. Uh, the, there was a, a question that was asked also by our audience is, uh, uh, during registration that um, Mr. McDonald mentioned that uh, one of the causes of uh, deforestation is through agriculture, that is uh, through uh, tobacco curing. Uh, registration uh, asked that are there alternatives for, for, for us to use as farmers who are in tobacco um, agriculture that we can use for curing um, our product. Mr. McDonald. Right. Uh, the registrant was asking, are there alternatives that can be used other than firewood or other than forest to cure uh, tobacco in, uh, in their farming area? Uh, Mr. James, do you have uh, uh, an answer to that? All right, yeah, thank you very much. There are better options, a lot of them. They can use electricity, right? But it's, it's, it's just expensive. They can use electricity. There are some heaters, uh, electrical heaters uh, controlled that they can use to cure tobacco. Uh, however, it's just that the farmer, they resort to using firewood because it's cheap. They can also use gas as well uh, for curing, uh, for example, biogas they, they can use it as well but however it needs um, some other more processing and, 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 and advanced uh, designs for it to then power or cure tobacco because in itself biogas consists constitutes of carbon dioxide and methane and methane is combustible so they then need for the enrichment of the gas prior to it being used in curing otherwise it will um, ruin uh, or compromise the quality of their curing process. But those are the, the, some of the solutions that we can adopt, especially when we are in uh, Africa. We can even go solar. Solar is also expensive, but it's, it's practical. You can use electricity or you can use uh, biogas. So those are some of the issues that I know, or ways in which we can implement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. McDonald, on, uh, in addressing that. Um, for my chat section, I can see Tichawana Mungazi, your hand is up. Okay. Uh, I also want to add one on the, on the question that was asked in the, um, on what Mr. McDonald responded. I think uh, at, at global level, at continental level, and also at national level, we need to change our uh, business approach, uh, our entrepreneurship approach. You find out uh, whenever someone is planning for their business, they tend to look for cheaper alternatives, where, be it for inputs or be it for, for whatever they need for their business. But uh, there is a common saying that everything that is cheap turns out to be expensive. And as we can see, the more we resort for using uh, for firewood, the more we resort for to using uh, these cheaper resources, the more it becomes costly to us uh, indirectly or directly, as we can see with these issues. So I, it's something that I would like to pose on to everyone in here, that uh, we need to promote uh, green uh, innovation and green entrepreneurship. Let's look for the best alternative that will not uh, affect our environment, that will not affect uh, 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 the future, that, that is sustainable. So uh, sustainability is actually a main issue on, the, uh, on these things that we need to consider whenever we are planning for our business, whenever we are uh, planning for, 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 for anything. That is what I wanted to highlight. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Tichawana Mungazi, uh, for your contribution uh, to all uh, to us all, uh, the entrepreneurs, that we need to think uh, our business in a sustainable manner. That is to uh, uh, plan things that are going to work for the future generation. Uh, looking at my core, uh, my comment or the chat section. Uh, there is a comment from Van Quinn uh, um, that she says, in, uh, in my first world country, there is a huge campaign and action in recycling as well as the waste collection by, local, by the local councils. However, we experience here in Africa, this is not always the case. So when it comes to not having our waste rubbish collected, uh, many households, companies, ETC, are banning it. Uh, this has a great impact to the environment and health. What solutions are there? How do we educate those that are banning? Uh, uh, how can we uh, educate those that banning have a uh, uh, health hazard? Uh, some people may say, if they don't ban, how do we dispose them? Uh, well, that's, uh, uh, that's, those are questions from uh, Van Quinn uh, with regard to today's presentation. And uh, also she is mentioning a lot about uh, waste uh, management plan, uh, waste management plan al along the local ca uh, councils in Africa and at household level. And uh, the, question, uh, the questions that she raised uh, so sensitive, uh, I will leave this to either Mr. McDonald or the platform to answer uh, what are the solutions available uh, to dispose our, uh, our waste rather than burning them and how do we minimize the health hazard of burning our um, waste. In Zimbabwe, I will use my experience in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, I think nowadays the uh, people who are into collecting, uh, into waste collection. I think it, it, it's slowly becoming a uh, good business in, in Zimbabwe, where people are coming and then roaming around collecting pet bottles uh, and other plastic for resale. So we can sort, I think the, 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 the main, the first stage uh, towards uh, this waste management uh, problem is to teach people to sort their waste. If they've got organic waste, they can sort that organic waste and then use it maybe in their gardens as, as, as manure. Uh, if they have got a, a digester, they can use it uh, for feeding for their digester. And now we've got metal uh, waste, metal waste, they can sort it and resell it for those who do recycling, like what Vani uh, highlighted in um, uh, overview. And again, uh, 
uh, for plastic, now plastic uh, lies, or it could be the, the greatest uh, problem. Why? Because there are different types of plastic, and it's difficult to sort if you don't know, especially it's difficult to educate everyone about how we wish we what is. Uh, is this pet? Is this uh, polystyrene and whatever? So the idea now is to 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 have got that which is easier to sort being sorted in the remainder, maybe uh, used uh, for dump sites as well. So those are some of the ways that we can use uh, to address this waste management issues. We can teach people to sort their waste. I think that can be a very good start. And there are a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities towards waste management, you can even have people uh, creating uh, a company that collect metals and recycle, or even sell maybe access as the, the intermediary to the companies that recycle and the community that get the waste So those are, it's actually a, a, an opportunity that we can take to, 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 to make uh, employment, take employment and also make a living from waste management. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. McDonald, uh, for answering the questions from Van Quinn. Um, any other contribution towards what uh, Van Quinn have asked from the floor? Mm -hmm. All right, I do believe the answer has made contentment to uh, Ms. Van Quinn. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Van Quinn. Uh, and uh, there is a comment from uh, Fungai Mpunga uh, that he is asking that um, are there other experiences or observation in other countries in terms of uh, deforestation? Uh, I think uh, this uh, question po is posed to all us all uh, across Africa who is in this platform that uh, what are other experiences and all our observations that you are having in your country or other countries that you have had or visited uh, 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 in terms of uh, understanding deforestation. Um, well, I do believe uh, everybody have got uh, different uh, experiences uh, in terms of uh, deforestation uh, in their own country or other uh, countries that they are working in or they have visited. Um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, with the, uh, from the chat comment uh, that was asked earlier about uh, uh, Zambia, where people are surviving from uh, Seven Chaco. Uh, this, uh, to me, I saw it so much um, sensitive to the Zambians, even Africa across across Africa, that uh, some of people they are surviving through. Uh, selling of charcoal. That means that there is a heavy deforestation in uh, Zambia. I do believe those people they are also implementing other solution or programs to replant the trees that they are cutting down. And I do believe they are heavy awareness campaign across Zambia uh, in terms of deforestation and introducing other survival method other than uh, deforestation and use of fossil fuel in Zambia. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you very much for uh, the contribution. However, the, uh, our platform is too open for discussion. We can continue to discuss, ask questions regarding uh, 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 deforestation in Africa and other opinions and thoughts uh, uh, that you have uh, to be discussed in this platform. Uh, well, I I believe everyone is contented and uh, everybody is understanding the subject matter um, to, under discussion. Mr. Um, uh, James, do you have any closing remarks uh, towards the presentation of today? Mr. James? All right, uh, thank you very much. I think in, in conclusion, um, what we can uh, do as nations is to have people who are interested. There is actually a very interesting phrase uh, which says that if you don't like the situation that you are in, change it, you are not a tree. So what it reflects is that uh, trees, they are stationary, they don't move. 
if a tree is here, it's going to stay there forever, right? So it takes human effort to cut down those trees. So I think those ones of us who are eager and curious and concerned about the rate at which forests are being cut, let us take a proactive uh, action towards saving the environment, be it uh, having a financial input towards uh, this conservation goal, or maybe uh, lobby uh, as an environmentalist to our government. Uh, let us also lobby to the responsible authorities for them to have their other parts of uh, attention towards uh, the environment so that we save the forest. Because there is a point where we are going to get to a slippery slope where it's going to be irreversible to reverse this uh, rate of deforestation and uh, the implications that they, they, they are fatal. So I think in, in closing, let us adopt uh, actions that are sustainable. And actions that are sustainable, they allow us to meet our own needs, but not compromising the future generation ability to meet their own uh, needs. So let's save the forest. And this issue of deforestation is real and needs our action as individuals. I think in that, I thank you very much. And thank you for the listening and uh, for participating in this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, ESH Lounge. Thank you very much. I think uh, rest in peace. Well, Mr. McDonald, thank you very much for taking us uh, the time with us in presenting burning issues in Africa. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. McDonald, for your presentation and the contribution. It is such a, an honor to have you. We stay blessed. Um, on our notification and the announcement, uh, um, we are uh, next Friday, that is our, uh, this coming Friday, we are going to have Mr. Stephen Rovire, who is going to present us on topic that uh, is working at heights. And uh, I do believe we are going to have uh, each other at the same uh, time uh, on this platform. Um, it was a great presentation, uh, Mr. McDonald. Thank you very much. And um, on the next session, we are going to have uh, Stephen Ruvire, who is going to present us on the working at heights. Um, and uh, on our October issues, we are going to have um, a theme that is mining and construction safety. And uh, everybody is welcome to, to our platform. If you have each or any issue to present or any issues to talk about, please email us on the uh, uh, emails provided or visit our website or even join our WhatsApp group uh, on the numbers that are displayed on the screen and also contact us on our social media that is also uh, displayed on the screen. You can call us on those numbers that are also displayed on the screen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is worth to know that um, we are changing our time or our webinar presentations uh, starting next week as vindicated on the screen that uh, green, which means uh, time that we are, we are going to start at 8 a.m. up to 10 p.m. On the West Africa, that we are going to move a little bit, that we are going to start at 9 a.m. up to 11 a.m. And on the Central African time, that we are going to start at 10 a.m. up to 12 um, uh, p.m. And the East Africa, we are going to change uh, also our time starting, that is starting from 11 a.m. Uh, up to uh, 1 p.m. Uh, this shift of time that has uh, a concern from uh, different uh, uh, friends that are joining us as uh, ESH Africa across the, uh, Africa that are concerned with uh, the times that we are starting and ending up our webinar and all those times that has been pub uh, that is on the screen are uh, to accommodate everyone and the comfort of, uh, in their comfort zone so that we can have each other and join each other uh, as we discuss burning issues of. Um, uh, of uh, of uh, ESH Africa. Uh, on uh, uh, we are going to have a 
this uh this coming this end september we are we are launching up a magazine as esh africa that is going to be published uh this end of september that is uh this friday uh please you are all encouraged to subscribe the, uh the digital magazine that has been published uh for september issues and also uh we are going to uh the magazine titled sustainable energy synopsis uh in africa uh and uh on the coming uh on this coming month of october we are going to launch another magazine uh that uh, is going to have uh issues of africa you are free to contact us if you have an article or any issue that you need to write an advert in relation to uh environmental health and uh, safety across africa that you need to advertise through our magazine you are free to contact us on those uh, platforms that we have provided that is phone number whatsapp group and uh email address uh you are very free ladies and gentlemen contact us as we present issues uh that are concerned with environmental health and uh, safety Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this takes us to the end of our today's session as it marks uh, the end of this month. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone who makes this uh, uh, 18th episode a success and all the previous uh, episodes a success. You are a great, of a great importance in supporting ESH Africa. Uh, we would like to meet you next week as we discuss uh, working at highs and uh, in, under, the, under the theme of uh, uh, construction and mining health and safety. I would leave this time to everybody to turn on their cameras as we uh, um, want to take a group photo for everyone who is in this uh, <clears throat> who is in this uh, platform. Um, I can see everyone who is here and uh, Please, I would um, uh, give just three seconds for uh, to turn on their cameras as we try to take a group photo. I would ask here, um, um guys also take um, uh, uh, a photo for us so that we can keep it in our gallery. Uh, I would ask everybody to say cheese as we take our group photo. Peace.